Hi, Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist here. Today I want to talk to you about purifying water in emergencies. You know, we have another big storm like Sandy come upon us, or we've had a lot of big storms and hit China or in the Philippines or mega storms. Uh, we need to know how to do these things. You know, we may not have people come and get us for a while or help us, and it's really important. You can survive without food for quite a while, but not with, without water. So it's really important to know how to purify some water. And, you know, we don't need to come down with uh, typhoid or cholera, you know, like in Haiti, a lot of people came down with cholera because of poor water sources and the yeah, contamination with feces and things. And it's really important to uh, have drinkable, potable water, you know. And uh, this is important. And if you will live in a third world country and, you know, something happens, you need to know how to do this. This is important. Uh, boiling water is probably the first thing. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Take water in a pot and uh, wipe off the rim and everything and then boil the whole thing for 20 minutes and let it cool. Uh, a good rolling, you know, rolling boil and let it sit after that, after for, let it sit boil for 20 minutes and let it sit and cool, so unless you want to make tea afterwards, <laughs> which I like. Uh, but after that, if you, most people like cool water. Let it sit and let it cool off and then you can drink it. And then you can pour it into a, a clean container and keep it. And that's probably the, the best way to keep bacteria and other things out of uh, your system. Bacteria, even viruses, it kills everything. So that's really the best way. And you want to pick your water sources. You know, if it's a running water source, that's really great. And you want to pick something that's clear. You don't want it, you know, really muddy. If it's uh, muddy and that type of thing, put it through cheesecloth and other things to take out some of the contaminants and the big chunks, you know, a little bark and grass and anything that's in it, and uh, try to take that out, even put it through a sieve, that would help, or uh, a strainer, that would help also. Now I get into other things, and these are just in emergency cases. You know, of course we use chlorine in our big cities and they use that to purify our water. And in an emergency we can use household bleach. I know some of you are going to say, eh. But we're just talking about getting through the hard times here. If, like I said, if you don't get through uh, the hard times, uh, you, you can survive with without food for a while, but with water, no. And just using household 5 or 6% household bleach and using an, a dropper bottle like this you know and just taking eight drops per gallon and letting it sit for an hour and then allowing that to be used for drinking it, it works great uh, this you know you can't drink straight chlorine or bleach that's toxic of course and we have to kill the bacteria that's in there or the in the viruses and all those other things so it's important to allow yourself to know it's just a small amount we're putting eight drops per gallon and then letting it sit for an hour another way is to use tincture of iodine or that type of thing some people use Lugol solution, which is another form of iodine also, but it's five drops per quart, and let it sit for one hour, and and that will kill any of the bacteria. And that's another way. Now, of course, there are other things that you can buy, like halozone tablets, which are basically a, halos a chlorinated tablet, which uh, you drop into a quart of water and let it sit for, you know, an hour, or 20 minutes, depending on the tablet. Some of them you have to read the label, somewhere from a half hour to an hour. And then you have water that's drinkable. And make sure that you, make sure that the rim of it, whatever you have is dry, because, you know, if it splash the water up on the rim, that could be contaminated also. And you can make a syrup, 
charcoal filter using just about anything. You know, if you burn something, some wood, you end up with charcoal, or you have some charcoal in, in the house, or you can make a, a filter. You can take a, a piece of plastic, or you could take a, a, a funnel that you have and put a little grass at the bottom, you know, make sure it's clean, put, and then put a, a layer of sand, and then, then put some charcoal ground up at the top. It doesn't have to be real fine, it's just, uh, you know, little granules. And then pour your water through that, and that'll do a pretty good job. And, and there are other things that you can buy. I keep around the house a, a big gravity feed iodine filter. And I'm able, I can actually pour in a gallon of water and then within a half hour or so I have a gallon of filtered water at the bottom. And lots of different places like the outdoor stores like REI and just about everywhere. Any of the outdoor stores will have these type of things. And there's also ceramic filters and a lot of people backpacking use those and they have a very small opening and it's just like a looks like a piece of stone and it's in this filtration machine and you actually pump it and it forces the water through this porous stone and it holds everything back as far as you know bacteria and that type of thing and you end up with clear water uh, you want to make sure you take out all the particulate material because that thing will get clogged up real fast. And it can be taken out, that little stone, and washed also. And those are really kind of expensive, uh, but they do work really well. I know when I went to India, I took a water filter with me as I didn't want to get sick because uh, my brother had gone and he ended up very sick. So. I said, no, that's not going to happen. So I ended up uh, taking a water filter with me. It had iodine in it. And I stayed well most of the trip, except for the very last minute when I ate something I shouldn't have. <laughs> oh, it's on me. Anyway, but right now it's very important to know these things. I think it's important that everybody know how to uh, have some water when there isn't nothing around as far as, you know, potable water. Uh, there might be something out in the street, a little puddle. Uh, if you're thirsty, it's going to be very important. Uh, so there might be, you know, a, a little bit of rainfall that comes down, and that's going to be important. Now, wherever you can find, maybe in your area, the water table is really uh, very shallow. I know my mother used to live up in the... Uh, Northern California, the water table is only about three feet down or four feet down. So all they had to do is dig down just a little ways and the water came up. Uh, so that's important also. Know where you can find water. Uh, that's very important. So, and certain plants have water in them. You know, it's like we have bananas here. And banana plants, you cut one down and then take the stem at the bottom and you make a little indentation and the water comes right into the middle of that, and then, wow, it's uh, really good. The first little bit is a little bitter. I mean, you throw that out, and then some more comes in, and then that's really great water. Also, if you live in the desert, you know, some of the cacti have water in them that are really good uh, for survival. So it's important that we allow ourselves to, you know, take it upon ourselves if we have other people with us that so we you know we need to take care of them we need to take care of ourselves and we never know when something's going to happen and uh, and these are not for the long-term use uh, many of these you know this is just for getting through the emergency but remember you got to have water you know within a short time the body doesn't work very well because we're over 70 percent water and our bodies are made up of water, so we need to have water every day. And I recommend at least eight eight ounce glasses a day, and that's important because otherwise, if we don't have that water, we don't have enzymatic processes going on in our body. And we have to have a, a certain equilibrium of water. You know, can't drink too much either. I've seen people kill themselves with drinking too much water. So make sure you have water around and. You might want to write these things down, you know. Uh, one thing about bleach also, 
it does go bad after a while. It just doesn't doesn't work after a while. You just have it sitting somewhere in the plastic jug for a year. All of a sudden, it has no viability. The iodine will stay forever. And if you buy halozone tablets, the chlorinating tablets, they, they keep just for a, for a long, long time. But uh, you keep that in mind also. Now here's to your good health, and I love you.